Getting students to work together in groups can be a big struggle. And so doing these first 21 day activities can help improve students' ability to work in groups and communicate with other group members. So most of these activities are about 10 to 20 minutes in length. And I actually found these activities um, on a website. It's on the second slide right here. It's a really good article. So I highly suggest you kind of look at this and it talks about uh, the first 20 days and building that group work in your classroom. And so what I've done is I have a calendar. And again, these activities are going to take about 10 to 20 minutes and they should probably be modeled by you first. And then once you introduce this routine, you can reuse it. And I would highly suggest that you do reuse it. So the first thing is students um, have a student interview. So everything is linked here for the day. Feel free to rearrange if you want to. And on the day, um, all the activities are here. So day one is silent interviews and students might use partner cards. These are really fun where you have like the same team, the same emoji, the same match, and that is your partner. Um, I've seen teachers use cards as well and they work just as well with that. And then I've also seen teachers use appointments partners where students will sign up for a time. Um, so they'll all have a different time and that's who their partner is throughout the whole year. Um, so that could work just as well um, either way. And so what students will do on day one is they're going to interview their partner and they're only going to write use writing only. Then they introduce the partner to the class. Day two, um, students are to be on task. And there's another video that walks through this activity that you can find down here in the speaker notes. Um, but when they're prompted, they're gonna just make sure that their partner is on task and make sure they are where they're supposed to be. For day three, um, it's a helping curriculum. And on this helping curriculum, students are just kind of reflecting on have they asked for help today or have they given help? And so there's four things um, just to kind of have students reflect every single day. Um, do they offer help? And it kind of goes through some steps if they offered help. Did they ask for help? And it talks about um, tech, check and connect. Or do they need, don't need help, um, but maybe they need to collaborate. So it talks about how to work with another student. And then finally, maybe they don't need help. And how do you decline help? And what's some sentence starters to help students be kind about it instead of rude about they don't need help. So again, this helping curriculum can help you with your classroom on having students offer help, asking for help, accepting for help, and how to decline help as well. The next way to kind of build your group work is that accountability talk to the community. So students are going to maybe do a think pair share. And on that share, they're actually going to share their partner's idea. They're going to summarize and listen to their partner and then share that idea instead of their own idea. Response cards. These can be a great way to have students agree on an answer. Students are going to um, talk about a question and they're going to use maybe this Jamboard and they are going to answer that question um, based on what the answer might be. And again, they have to agree on the answer. On day six, noise meter. This is a great way to discuss how loud it should be in a classroom. Um, and this is a great symbol that you're able to kind of move this little icon around and have it be wherever you need it to be. But this allows students to start to monitor their voice level and know, hey, am I at the right level or do I need to bring it down a notch or do I need to maybe talk a little bit louder so my partner can hear me? Day seven is um, discussion. So you can discuss with your partner maybe what makes good communication skills. So they might have a question. Um, you can use the question that's on the day right here where they're discussing that communication. Or you can create a, a different question or you can reuse this template. And then they're going to write their idea and then what they got from their partner from sharing. So what is something that was shared from their partner that might develop a stronger understanding of what was shared? After that, it's going to go into accountability talk and um, knowledge base. So students might discuss how they ask for clarification and what um, serves as evidence in this content area. So again, they're kind of maybe looking for clarification, evidence to use in their responsiveness, and um, really starting to build that accountability in the classroom. Day nine is that think pair square. They're going to talk about a topic with their partner 
but then they go to another partner. So after they hear from their partner's opinion, they can share some of those ideas and those thoughts that they had with another partner and really dive deeper into the conversation. Day 10 is conversation round table. Um, right here, I have discussion diamond and there is another video um, that walks through how to use the discussion diamond activity. Um, but with this activity, students will create notes about a topic, then they talk with their group and then they summarize um, based on the group's ideas, the final answer. Day 11, you might use novel ideas only. And I love this activity from Tony Vincent. What students do is um, you're going to write down a word. So whatever your topic is, you might write down a key word about what students are learning about. Students will then brainstorm um, words in the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Whatever that topic is, they're going to brainstorm all of those different ideas that they have. Then you're going to set about a timer, maybe five minutes, two minutes, however much time you have. And the groups are going to write all of their ideas down. They're good ideas. They're bad ideas. They're trying to figure out that magic word exactly. Time's up. They're going to talk about the idea. And then you're going to reveal that magic word to the group. And whoever has that magic word might get a prize. Um, so again, can be really fun for your students to kind of brainstorm before an activity, maybe they're using some prior knowledge, or maybe it's something that they've already learned about. Um, but every single group member needs to have an item on the list and they can't repeat ideas, but their goal is to most have maybe the most novel ideas or that magic word. Day 12, you're gonna give students maybe a text to read and they're gonna use maybe Cyber Sandwich. This is a great edge of protocol that students are able to use. Um, so with Cyber Sandwich, they are going to do like a think pair share. So they are going to read the article, find, um, take notes, and then they're going to compare. What did we both have? What did one of us have? And kind of do a compare contrast Venn diagram with that activity. Day 13 is group response cards. So response cards, again, are coming back up, but this time students are not with a partner, they're with an actual group. Um, so again, students will work with their group on these response cards and they're going to try to figure out the correct answer together with their group. Day 14 is a sounding board. So students are going to meet with a partner, share their work and responses and their progress, and then get some feedback. So again, they're going to listen, provide feedback, and then they're going to get some clarity on any questions that they might have or don't understand. Um, but this is great for what maybe, what did you like best? Uh, what made you laugh? What made you want to hear more? And that kind of information. Um, so it can be kind of interesting when students are going through these three different activities. The next activity is day 15, um, sit and starters. So again, kind of just helping students with the like, I think your next step is, I agree with, I like how, and then they use these sit and starters to really start to dive deeper. Um, maybe they disagree or maybe they agree about something and they can respond in the correct way and talking and reflecting on what happens if someone does disagree with me. Day 16 is a walk-in review. So they're going to have a question and they're going to try to find another student in the class that is able to answer their question on their worksheet. Um, students will sign their name on their solution and then they're gonna answer the last question at their desk by themselves. So again, just getting students up and walking around, they're gonna be solving different questions on different worksheets and then other students are going to solve as well. Day 17, um, this one's another great one. These are just great strategies. And again, you're building up that group work. You're building up that capacity for students to work together. Um, so with this one, what students are going to do is they're going to read a text. Then they're going to quiz each other using different questions that they wrote down as they were reading the text. And if um, one of them can't answer, then the other student's going to show them where they found that answer in the text. Um, so again, great, great one for using um, evidence and recall and all of that kind of information. Number 18, numbered heads together. Students are going to have some type of problem and they're going to make sure all of their group members can answer it. So they have to resolve a problem, make sure everybody in the group can answer it. And then they're going to pick one spokesperson that will 
um, that the teacher is going to select. So everybody might have a number and then the teacher is going to say, okay, every person in um, that's a number three in the groups, you're going to share the response. Um, and so that person has to explain how that group solved and what they did to solve that problem. Day 19 is opinion stations. This is where students might choose um, where they stand on a topic. They're gonna share their opinion with someone that answered very similar to them, but then they're going to share it with someone who might have disagreed. Um, so again, creating that culture of it's okay to disagree, but this is how we're going to respond. And you might go back up and use some of um, those resources from before for those opinion stations. Day 20, students are going to create some type of poster summarizing their work on a topic. And then each member must write on a different colored marker. I love this one because you're able to see, okay, this student was blue, this student's yellow, this student was pink, and I can see all of the different work and who put the most work in and who didn't, or if the work was even. And I'm able to really see that um, quickly through that poster that the students were working on together. And then another great idea is just using group roles. So having those group roles together for students to collaborate and work together. And again, everybody has a role. So some students might be the timekeeper. Other students might be the line leader or the leader of the pack. Another one might get all the materials. Um, maybe one's the presenter. And you're able to maybe cut these out. These are on Canva and give them to your students. And that's the job role that they have for this project. Um, so again, building up your group work because i know it can be a struggle when students disagree or they say they don't want to work with that but building that piece in your culture can be really helpful and these collaboration strategies can be really great to use um, in your classroom as well because working together discussion is a higher level when it comes to john hattie on his um, instructional strategies that he suggests um, discussion really does move the needle. Um, so enjoy the 21 days and I can't wait to see what activities you do uh, each day and how it improves your classroom culture.